Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In my last video, I have covered a difference between Microsoft Defender for Office 365 security product, how you can use as per your requirement and what are their features and everything I shown in my last video. In this video, I am going to show you how you can control tenant allow block list in your tenant. The tenant allow block list in the Microsoft 365 Defender portal gives you a way to manually overwrite a Microsoft 365 filter verdict. The tenant allow block list used to during a mail flow for incoming message from external senders and note that it does not apply message within the organization. Quickly, I will show you how you can access that portal. Uh, it's basically it is a part of the security when you click on the security and when you go to the policy and rules and then you need to go to the threat policies and then you will see under the rules section there is a tenant allow block list the scope of this video i am going to only cover a domain and address uh, under the tenant allow block list so you will have a proper understanding what and where you can use uh, this this feature so basically uh, to save some time I have already uh, created some uh, test so that I can just show you basically if any sender or any domain is you are getting the very much uh, malicious or spam or any kind of attack then you can just block that domain or particular sender so your organization will not receive any email also at the same time all user from your organization they also not going to send any email to that sender or the domain also that features available under the anti-spam policy when you go to here and open the anti-spam inbound policy then then you will see when you go to the bottom of the page and you will see there is a block sender and block domain so what is the main difference between these two see when you add sender block any sender from this portal from the anti-spam inbound policy or block domain your organization not going to receive any email from this sender or from this domain right but when you add this here your organization user also not going to send any email to uh, this ID. I quickly I will show you from the I already done this uh, test so I will quickly go to the exchange uh, message trace and I will show you quickly what is the and how you can figure out uh, which policy is triggering okay so message trace and I'll just go uh, last six hour and search and you see here uh, I try to send email admin uh, this another uh, mailbox of my my tenant uh, through that I able to send uh, I try to send an email to the hotmail.com and hotmail.com uh, my amol power 297 at the hotmail.com I put as a block uh, in the tenant allow list okay and that email I try to send is got a failed so I and this is delivery test okay that is delivery come back to my inbox so but this is the field and when you click on here and you will see this email was blocked yeah see the field failed but you can see more about uh, that particular email from view message in the explorer and it will open the another portal uh, threat explorer portal is open and when you click on the test and it will uh, open this blade and here you can see that uh, email is got failed and it will give you more information about uh, the email properties and it will show you everything uh, another example I will show you that is when I try to send email from uh, 297 hotmail.com uh, to the same user and uh, or any user in the organization so I again I'm not able to receive and that email land in the quarantine now you can see that message properties from here explorer and let let open that and uh, when you click on the subject yeah when you click on the subject and you will see here blocked by organization policy tenant allow block list sender email address blocked so you can clearly see that it is blocked by yeah so you clearly see it is blocked by uh, that particular policy and uh, Oh yes, our end users not going to receive or send email to that particular sender uh, if you add that email ID in uh, tenant allow and block list. Second uh, example, I'll show you 
I added amulpower 297 gmail.com uh, and I try to send an email from that ID to the in my organization test email from gmail and it got failed because it is added as a spam filter but at the same time when I try to send email from the internal organization to the gmail.com same account it is delivered it is going out so if you add any sender block list it will just block the incoming email but not outgoing but when you add the same sender or a same domain in the tenant allow and block list it it will stop all the transaction it will not uh, the any user not able to send or receive email to that sender or that domain right that is the main main uh, difference in a tenant allow block list there is no allow tenant there is no there is no such a thing uh, mentioned here how you can allow any specific tenant right see microsoft just not allowing any user to uh, allow any domain uh, under this right so there is another way you can uh, allow list you can make a allow list from the going action and submission tab and there is a submission button right submission tab and here you can put like a uh, okay now i want to add uh, one one of the email that okay it is unnecessarily marking as a spam malware or spam category and that always emails going into the junk folder or the quarantine right so that time you can allow that list by just clicking this email uploading that email message or the network id that message network id and that network id you can get from the uh, message trace from this portal you can get that a particular email uh, network message id and you can put that here or you can upload the complete email if it is not confidential right and the whose user is uh, having that problem that you can mention here and uh, yeah should not have been blocked because it's a false positive uh, yeah so these these kind of things you can uh, mention here 30 days after the 30 days uh, this entry will remove microsoft uh, engine microsoft backend portal backend engine it will detect okay or they will do some magic in the backend and then uh, that email will uh, or that domain or sender uh, will be get whitelisted automatically in their system right so this this is because of that microsoft uh, keeps this uh, entry for seven days allow the similar attributes and it will just allow everything uh, from the spam or malware uh, policies and you will get that message right and uh, if you want to block the same if it is a exact if it is a, a genuine spam email you can just uh, should have been blocked and uh, it will yeah so a sender and domain you can just block this sender for 30 days and it will microsoft again the microsoft backend system will analyze and do their uh, due diligence and it will block that sender or recipient a sender domain or sender id uh, in their system so after the 30 days uh, they will stop those kind of message uh, entering in your organization from the user reported from this tab you will see if if end user has submitted any uh, uh, email uh, to mark as a, a false positive or a false negative then you can see that request right here okay there is again the same thing uh, when you go to the here and you can do the same thing for url if it is any malicious url if you found in your body that is marking unnecessarily uh, false positive or false negative that kind of things you can add and also email attachment if it is any attachment is marking as a malware then also you can upload that attachment and the microsoft will take a decision whether you uh, you want to allow or block okay if it is unnecessarily marking as a false positive or false negative based on these things uh, Mark microsoft will take a action uh, for the 30 days okay and uh, yeah so this is the small demo from uh, uh, this video and uh, if you have any questions please do let me know in my next video i will talk about spoofed senders uh, how you can add the spoof sender here and genuinely and uh, how you can allow and block these kind of things from here and uh, it's very interesting uh, because there is a, a particular format that you need to add here and uh, that format need to you need to understand which entry should go here so that's very very interesting things uh, please keep watching this my channel and tomorrow i will show you this spoof sender list okay thanks thanks for watching and uh, have a great day and happy learning thank you bye